OK, in this worked example, I'm going to model this circuit. A oh, moderately complicated circuit. Two voltage sources, three resistors. First step, of course, is to do draw some currents. Which way are the currents going to go? Well, I think I'm going to guess. I think we're going to have I1 along there, and we're going to have I2 along here. And which way is it going through here? I'm going to guess it's going to go down I3, but that's only a guess. If you get it wrong, then it'll come out negative. Now let's look at the voltages. And so we know from currents, the junction law, that I1 equals I2 plus I3. And we need to pick some loops. So let me pick as a loop this one and this one. I'm going to pick clockwise. Now we need a loop that goes through every component at least once. So there are three possible loops we could use. There's a loop around here, the loop around here, or the loop all the way around the outside. But we don't need all three because this loop goes through that voltage source and these two resistors, and this loop adds the other two things that are missed. So they go through everything by themselves. OK, so let's start off with the voltages around this loop. If we start off here, we're going from the minus side to the plus side, so the voltage there goes up by V1. Then along here, the voltage must be higher where the current goes into the resistor when it, than when it leaves. So it's going to go down by I1, R1. And then along here, once again, the voltage goes down from where it goes in to goes out. So it's going to go down by I3, R2. And it must come back to where it started from. So that gives us the equation that V1 plus I1, R1, sorry, minus, minus I3, R2, must sum to zero. How about this loop? Well, let's start here. Going up, we're now going from where the current comes out to where it comes in. So the voltage must be rising there. So we've got voltage, it starts here. It must go up as we go clockwise around this loop by I3, R2 because where the current goes in must be at a higher voltage than where it comes out. Then when we get here, it's going up again, because we're going from the minus to the plus side. So it's going to go up by V2. Getting these signs right is the hardest thing. And then it must go down, because we're going from where the current comes in to where it goes out. Because the current, remember, is going around here, I2. So it must go down by I2, R3. So if you write down equations, we get I3, R2, plus R... plus V2, minus I2, R3, equals 0. OK, so we have three unknowns, the three voltage currents, let us say. Let's assume we know what the resistors and the voltages are, and... We have three equations. We've got equation 1 up here, equation 2 over there, and equation 3 over there. So this is standard simultaneous linear equations. If you want an example of how to solve it by hand, look at the written notes. But for the moment, I'm going to cheat and do it using Mathematica, a computer algebra system. So I open up a Mathematica notebook. And I'm going to use the solve command. As all Mathematica commands, it starts with a capital, solve, and then opens a square bracket. Now, I don't remember the syntax for this, but if I click on the I button there, it brings up a help page, and down here it has how you solve simultaneous equations. So I'm going to copy that technique. So what we do is we'll list the equations. So we'll have I1 equals is double equal sign in Mathematica, single equal sign in something else, equals I2 plus I3, double and. And I've got our equation over here, V1 minus I1, R1 minus I3, R2 equals zero. 
and we've got another equation, so double ands again. And now let's have this equation. Is that I3 R2 plus V2 minus I2 R3 equals zero, comma. We now need to tell it what we're solving for. Inside curly brackets, we're going to solve we want the currents I1, I2, I3. Close the square brackets and hit shift enter. And it gives us some lovely simple equations for what the three currents are going to be. Done. Solved. Um, note I'm using lowercase letters because Mathematica gets confused to use a capital I because it's also the Mathematica sign for integrals. So you just use lowercase, it won't get confused.